from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. Good afternoon. I hope all of you have enjoyed meeting one another over lunch, and I've been reading about and hearing about the great work that you are all doing, and we are very grateful that you are doing this work. And congratulations to our outstanding 2017 award winners and best practice honorees. When I think about the impact of literacy, I have to quote the great statesman Frederick Douglass, who said, once you learn to read, you will be forever free. And your work is helping millions of people free themselves from the shackles of illiteracy to achieve the success that literacy can bring. And now, it is my great pleasure to introduce the man who is most responsible for today's event. David Rubenstein created the Library of Congress Literacy Awards program five years ago. And thanks to his generous, ongoing support and belief in the power of literacy, the library has awarded nearly one and a half million dollars in prizes to 66 institutions in 30 countries. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Rubenstein. Uh, the Library of Congress uh, Literacy Awards came about because I had thought that the Library of Congress, in addition to uh, doing all the wonderful things it does, should be promoting literacy. Uh, literacy, as we all know, is a terrible problem in our country. Uh, illiteracy rate, depending on how you look at it, is somewhere between 12 and 13% of adults are functionally illiterate, and that is a serious problem. And as you all know, if you are functionally illiterate, your chance of earning a good income and also having a happy life is reduced. Your chance of being part of our criminal justice system is increased. So the idea is to try to reward people and acknowledge people who have done something. We're not going to change all the illiteracy problems in this country by having these awards, but maybe some people will read about what we're doing, and some people might be more motivated to do some things to help the, the illiteracy problems. I should say, while we don't address the other problem I'm worried about, which is illiteracy, it is something that is also of concern. Uh, about 30% of people who graduate from college do not ever read another book in their life which is not a good situation. But it's sad that so many people who can read choose not to read and not to read a book, and it's a sad situation. So what we're trying to do today is just really honor people who have uh, done great things with their life in terms of helping to reduce illiteracy in the areas they're talking about. Uh, we don't have enough money to give everybody an award. We don't have as much money as we should have to fight the cause of illiteracy, but we are trying to do something to say, to say the Library of Congress cares about it, and it's something that all of you should be proud for what you're doing. To summarize, there are not enough books, in enough languages, and not enough access. Pratham Books was established in 2004 to address these problems in India, where there are some 300 million children under the age of 14, and where we have 22 official languages and some 700 smaller ones. We are one of the largest children's publishers in India, and despite having achieved book readership of some 50 million in the last 14 years, we are far from achieving our mission of putting a book in every child's hands. We therefore started to explore how technology could play a role in improving access to books and in creating more books in more languages. And this has led us to a very exciting journey and has brought us here. With regard to print books, we have developed over 350 original titles in 20 languages for a total of 2,500 titles. We have printed and distributed 14 million books so far, plus 16 million story cards. Our price points are 5 cents to 60 cents for our high quality full color books, a sample of which is available in the room next door. Our estimated readership so far is 50 million, and yet 300 million children to reach in India alone. So I started thinking about a more holistic approach to education, 
and looking at how do we bring parents and children together? How do we get them out of the ruralness that they're in? And how do we help the parents get the skills they need to start feeling good about themselves? Because I had taught adults to read in a church basement, and I knew the, the stigma that they felt and, and the fear of, of letting anybody know. And so how do we get them to come out, and how do we get their children engaged so that they get an early start and they don't fall so far behind? So the only thing I could think of in the hills and hollers of Kentucky was to bring them on a school bus to a school. And so the three and four year olds came with their parents, the three and four year olds were right next door, the parents got literacy skills, but they started feeling like they could learn. And, but, and the children were getting good early childhood, but they started coming together as a group of parents to try to solve problems together. But what was the magic of it was that the parents spent at least an hour working with their own children every day. So they had a chance to see the early childhood teacher working with their child. They had a chance to know what their child was doing through play and how they were learning and what they could do at home. And most of all, they had a chance to know that they were important in their child's life. Every parent cares about their child. So they had an opportunity to get the skills and the knowledge that they needed to play with their children and have fun with their children and at the same time help them learn. We have several design principles that really provide the foundation for the work we do. The first is that teachers are the solution. We are not going to increase uh, early literacy school scores at the rate we need to unless we provide teachers with the support and expertise and materials that they need in order to do their job effectively. The second is let's focus on research-based practices, not programs du jour. So at CLI, we take a, what's called a balanced literacy approach. We provide classrooms with authentic, authentic text. We uh, help teachers learn the strategies they need to learn in order to be effective early literacy instructors. The third design pr principle is partnership. We don't believe at CLI that what we do in Chicago can be airlifted and put down in Houston and be expected to have the same kind of impact. Rather, we want to work with our school or district colleagues understand what their priorities are, their areas of strength are, how they talk about the work, and support their efforts while bringing our expertise to the table. That way, we're not this outsourced early literacy solution. Rather, we're building capacity within the district, within the schools, or the charter management organization to get the work done. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.